This is Total Outdoor Programming. Hey everybody, this is Marty from Total Outdoor Programming and today we're going to be doing some daytime raccoon calling. So uh, it's kind of a fun thing you can do during the off season once deer season's over. It gives you something to get out there, collect a little bit of fur, and it's kind of fun. You don't have to go out through the night. I use an e-collar. Uh, the type that I'm using is a Primos Alpha Dog. And I usually use the coon fight. Sometimes I'll use a young coon in distress. Uh, but the main thing you want to do is locate a tree that has good holes, good dens in it. And uh, you'll start to learn, uh, especially if you've got snow and you can follow tracks, you'll start to learn which holes are actually being used and which ones are not. And the biggest key to setting up is make sure you put that collar on the opposite side of the tree. What you want to do is have that coon hear the noise peek out and start looking for the sound and he cannot see it unless he gets himself out of the hole and comes around the back side and make sure that he doesn't have any way of being able to come out and look down at the collar. Uh, you want to make sure that the collar is hidden somehow so when he comes out he has to go around the back side of the tree and that's what gives you your shot. With the decoy what you're trying to do is set it about 10 yards away from the collar and what you want hopefully to happen is that coon will come out and hear the fight and he'll look over and see that decoy moving and think it's an easy meal that those two coons are fighting over. So hopefully he'll end up coming out of the tree and running down and trying to attack the critter. Uh, it's kind of fun when they do that. It's pretty exciting and that's when you definitely want to have your shotgun handy. So you want to set that decoy probably about 10 yards around the side. So if he peeks out he might be able to see the decoy but you don't want him to be able to see the collar itself. You want that collar back behind the tree. Usually I'll set up about 20 to 50 yards away from the tree, just somewhere where I've got a nice open shot. And I'll usually set myself just the side of where the den hole is. Enough that I can see if there's a coon popping his head out so I know if I need to keep waiting. But I want to be on that side so when he does pop out and come around the tree out of the den, that's when I've got my shot. So I'll not set up directly looking at the den. I'll go around the side just a little bit so I can see the den, but then I'm lined up for him to come out of the hole. It's really important to slip in quiet. You want to make sure that uh, they're not hearing you. And when you set yourself up, try and set up on the downwind side. Uh, I know usually they're pretty high up in the tree, but I have had certain times where they'll actually catch your wind. Uh, when the den holes aren't horribly high up, that wind will actually pick up towards them a little bit. So you always want to set on the downwind or crosswind side of the den hole. Well, so it figures. I shut the camera off. I'd pretty much given up on this particular den tree here and uh, didn't think anything was coming out. All of a sudden, as soon as I get the cameras shut off and put away, I look up and here comes a coon popping out, going up the tree. Managed to get a pretty good shot on him, dropped him out of the tree, and there's coon number one. Sorry we didn't get him on film, but sometimes it happens that way. So.
As far as the gun that you're using, if you're going to use a shotgun, you want to use something pretty heavy duty. The biggest problem you can have with daytime coon calling is you can get them to come out of the den and you can shoot them and they can run back in and nobody wants to waste an animal. So you definitely want to try and drop them as soon as they get out of that den so they do not get back into that tree. If you're going to use a shotgun, I would recommend at least double B or bigger. Uh, you might even try number four buckshot is what I typically use. Um, that'll knock them off the tree pretty good so they don't have a chance of getting back into that hole. If you're going to use a rifle, 22 caliber works as long as you can get a good headshot, but you got to get it really good or else they can make it back in that tree. Um, if you're going to use something that's a center fire, uh, 17 or a 204 is what I use, the 204 Ruger here, and they work great, but there's a safety issue. You have to definitely make sure if you're going to take that shot that they have to be completely against the tree so that bullet goes through them right into that tree. You do not want that bullet zipping off at that angle uh, for safety reasons. So if you're going to use a center fire rifle, something in a smaller caliber like a 17 or a 204, just be really particular about when you take your shot for safety. Well, all in all, not too bad for a short hunt. Went out, we ended up doing four different trees. Ended up getting two coons, real nice ones, nice males. It's a lot of fun. It's something nice to do in the middle of winter when everything slows down a little bit and uh, get a chance to get a little bit of fur in the, in the freezer. So hopefully these tips help. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, just put them in the comment line down there. And uh, if you like these videos, keep subscribing and we'll keep bringing more for you.